evening from New York. While President Obama went to Canada today to get started on the Clean Up America's Image Abroad part of his to-do list, his bigger problem, and our fifth story, Cleaning Up America's Image in America. The President tonight with a new set of provocative quotes from his own party Speaker of the House about prosecuting the worst abuses and abusers from the Bush administration. President Obama spending seven hours in the Canadian capital today, almost confusing Ottawa with Iowa, the only apparent misstep uh, evident on his first foreign visit here at home. He and Democrats Democratic leaders still possibly at odds over whether to prosecute top Bush officials, a federal appeals court giving the White House until Wednesday to weigh in on the claim of executive privilege that Karl Rove is using to keep from testifying to Congress. White House counsel Greg Craig urging Congress to reach an agreement with Rove and other former Bush officials that might compel them to testify without involving the White House. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, Speaker Pelosi indicating she is open to the idea of prosecuting Rove and others, as well as to a truth commission to fully investigate abuses. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, the speaker was asked, quote, do you foresee a scenario in which senior members of the Bush administration are actually prosecuted? Pelosi answering, I think so. The American people deserve answers. Where we are now in terms of prosecution of White House staff is that we have charged them with contempt of Congress. We're talking about Harriet Myers, Josh Bolton, and Karl Rove. Next question. I'm talking more about the level of a Donald Rumsfeld, people who authorized torture and greenlighted the kidnapping and rendition of innocent people. The speaker's answers, I did not like their policies, which is why we needed to win the election to get them out of power, but I don't know what the evidence is against them on any specific charge. When reminded that Dick Cheney had been tossed out at the end of the Nixon administration, only to return 25 years later, and asked about the danger of other Bush officials returning to office again, the speaker invoking Senator Leahy's Truth Commission proposal in her answer, quote, We should have full examination. I'm not denying that. What Mr. Leahy is putting forward in terms of a Truth and Reconciliation Committee has always been helpful. Meantime, no less than Fredo himself, former Bush Attorney General and White House Counsel Alberto Gonzalez, saying today that he would cooperate with a Leahy Truth Commission with a catch. Mr. Gonzalez saying he'd be willing to testify, quote, so long as what we're talking about is the truth and things don't become politicized. Politicized. It's like hearing Alex Rodriguez admit to using steroids and twice gravely say, I have to take my medicine. Time now to tonight. Let's turn to Jonathan Turley, professor of constitutional law at George Washington University. John, good evening to you. Hey, how's it going? Uh, is there any kind of agreement that Congress could be discussing with, with Karl Rove that would not include some form or fashion of immunity? I mean, isn't immunity implied by the word agreement? I, I can't imagine what else they would be talking about. Whatever they're talking about is a bad deal. I mean, this is the type of deal that you're supposed to limit the options. It's like Henry Ford saying you can have every, any color of car as long as it's black. And that's the deal that you normally give someone in Karl Rove's position. Karl Rove was in obvious and flagrant contempt of the last Congress. The arguments made by the Bush administration were just woefully inadequate. They didn't have any serious basis. So it's very hard to see how you negotiate from that standpoint. Also, the idea that he would flip on someone like Alberto Gonzalez, I think, is uh, just not going to happen. He's 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 not made of that type of uh, of stuff. And I also think that Karl Rove himself has much to answer for. If the if the Justice Department was politicized then one end of that process uh, dead-ended uh, in his office. Fredo Corleone also is not, uh, uh, is not the target. <laughs> you want Vito Corleone, so that's the other aspect of Rove and Gonzalez. But uh, on, uh, Howard, uh, Howard Feynman's point of the president-to-president -president courtesy here, is that what, 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 what Greg Craig is stepping in for? What is, what is he doing in this, and, and why, why is he involved in this process rather than standing aside? Well, you know, this is part of the process of finding yourself in power. It changes your outlook. It's like no one really cares about lawns until they're a new homeowner. Uh, and suddenly you find that people like the White House Council become incredibly risk averse. Uh, they don't want to have a fight of this kind. But it really would be George Bush that would be undermining these traditions. You're not supposed to be uh, restricting the executive privilege of your successors. Uh, it's really George Bush 
Bush that would be coming in and trying to exercise a sort of dead hand control over the new administration. I think he would lose. But this is really one of those principled fights that we expected between the two administrations. They have very different views, I hope, of executive privilege. Uh, George Bush seemed at war from the minute he took the first oath with the concept of the separation of powers. And even before 9-11, he really chafed at the idea of sharing power. And it continued to his very last day. There's no reason to compromise with a position like that. Um, I, I can't resist, although this is not particularly where we started, I can't resist getting your reaction to Pelosi's comments since we've talked so often about what, uh, the, in the larger sense, never mind Rove and whether or not he testified, but in the larger sense, what the Obama administration has to do about the Bush administration. Are you encouraged by what the speaker said to Rolling Stone, or is, or is this more um, indecision 2009? Well, I must say that I am uh, still skeptical. I, I, I'm i glad that, that Speaker Pelosi has come out so fervently, but remember, she was the one who was blocking any impeachment inquiry uh, and continually said that she couldn't imagine what evidence would be presented for impeachment. Uh, and so I would love to see this type of, of aggressive role of Congress in dealing with this. But I am very concerned about this idea of compromises and negotiations. Many of these things become sort of Capitol Hill kabuki of approved questions and answers. That's not what we want. And we certainly do not need another commission like the 9-11 Commission. You know, after the Gaza um, conflict, uh, Ambassador Rice with the Obama administration came forward and asked for an investigation of war crimes. Mm -hmm. And you could almost hear the laughter around the world where we are so quick to say, and rightfully so, that there should be a war crimes investigation unless it involves Americans and unless it involves our leaders. And we've got to overcome that image of being a nation of hypocrites. And that's only going to happen if we investigate. You know, nothing to see here. Keep moving. We've got it all under control. Uh, Jonathan Turley <laughs> of George Washington University. As always, John, great thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, Keith. Meantime, five